Well, we're glad to be here again tonight. Appreciate the blessings of the Lord. His goodness. God is good to us, isn't he? I want to say because I know tomorrow I'll probably forget to do it. I want to thank you for everything. Everything that was done. The meals, the place to stay. I tell you, I don't have one complaint. None. None. Y'all are doing a great job. You really are, and I just, uh, I just appreciate it. I really do. And uh, I would like for us to do one thing. You know, I, I've, I have noticed Brother Bobby. He's always recognizing everybody, giving recognition, the cooks, everything. You know what? I think he deserves a hand clap. I thought y'all were going to keep on clapping. We might get to shout. <laughs> we do appreciate Brother and Sister Roadcap and the church here. And uh, they're so kind. And I, it's just been an honor for us to be here. It's been an honor for us to get to meet them and to be acquainted with them. We've, we've met them when they was evangelizing. And we've been here preaching this meeting, I don't know, several years. I don't know how many, but anyway, a good many of them. All right. I want you to look with me in your Bible, Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 15 tonight. I want to talk to us about something. I tell you, I feel like all of these preachers has preached great, in the day services, yes, sir. even the youth services right. have just been outstanding. Yes, These young preachers has has preached their heart, and they've done good. Brother Kirk Phillips this morning yes, just done done great, yeah. done great. Yeah. And Brother Savage preached outstanding. You know, Brother Kirk, Brother Kirk's got that distinguished voice. I had some of them to come to me in the dinner line. They says, ain't he from Georgia? I said, yeah, he's from Georgia. They said, he don't talk like you? I said, well, maybe he just ain't as deep as south as I am. I just kind of pass it off like that. But anyway, I am just what I am by the grace of God. All right. Book of Luke, chapter 15. Let's stand together for the reading of God's Word. I want to begin reading with verse 22. But the Father said to his servants, He said, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Talking about the prodigal. Put a ring on his hand. Shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it. And let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they begin to be merry. Now his eldest son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, He said, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatty calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Says, and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. 
And he answering said to his father, he said, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatty calf. And he said unto his, and he said unto him, Son, art thou ever with me? And all that I have is thine. He said, It was meat that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We ask you, God, to move and to work. Help us here tonight, God, by your Spirit. God, we need you. Do you know the needs? Do you know the hearts of each and every individual right here tonight? We pray, God, to touch me and anoint me and strengthen me and use me here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Why don't you look back with me to verse 27. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he have received him safe and sound. I know you've heard this story preached many times about the prodigal son. And uh, I thought about in this chapter here in Luke chapter 15, uh, let me take my time and preach to us tonight. You know, the Lord, He declares two great truths in these stories here that's given us in this chapter. He tells us about the condition of the sinner. They're lost. They're lost. That is their condition. He gives us the picture of of a lost sheep. And that picture tells us of the doom of the sinner. He said he would leave the ninety and nine and go after that one lost sheep. Come on. Then he tells us about the woman with the ten pieces of silver. She lost one. And this is a picture of the darkness of the sinner, where she lit a candle and swept the house diligently until she found it. Come on. Then he talks about the lost son. And it, it's a picture of the depravity of man. That's what it's given us, of, of the sinner. And the sinner spiritually is like this son. He is in a far country away from God living in the hog pen of sin. Come on, can you say amen? Amen. But then again, you know, in these three stories here that is in this chapter, it also tells us of the compassion of a Savior. It tells us of His love. It tells us about a searching shepherd. A searching Savior. It all t- tells us the story in there about the one that lost a piece of silver, about a sweeping woman that was not satisfied until she found that lost piece of silver. Help me right here. And then again, it tells us about the prodigal, about the seeking father that was seeking that lost son that wanted that son 
to come back home. But then again, I think about, you know, then Jesus closes the three scenes in this parable here with a pointed picture. And then he begins to tell us about the elder brother. The elder brother. Come on. Help me right here for a little while tonight. That young preacher that got up here and preached last, he's talking about how nervous he was. The palm of my hand is already sweating. Come on, help me preach right here for a little while. And you know, I thought about this right here when he was talking about the elder brother and the elder son. It gives us a picture about the seeking father who was also seeking for the elder brother of the prodigal son. Help me while I preach. Is this not a picture of the attitude and the actions of the Pharisees? Help me preach. Help me preach. You know what Jesus was saying under them in this story? He was saying under them, this is really and truly how you are acting. This is really and truly how you are behaving. Come on, help me right here for a little while. You know, you know, if, if I would love to tonight, if the Holy Ghost would help me and anoint me and touch me right here tonight, and maybe after a while I'll get beyond this nervousness. Maybe I really will. I really will. But I feel like God's wanting to speak to us, and God's wanting to help us. I tell you what, I'd love to see a move of God. I'd love to see revival. We talk about revival. We pray for revival. But did you know there's things that hinders a move of God? Come on, help me right here for a little while. And I begin to think about, and you know, and uh, if the Lord would help me right here tonight, I'd like to take this story right here about the eldest son. You know, where he came in, and there they were. They were rejoicing. They were having a good time. They was music. They was dancing. You know, because of the prodigal that had come back home. And the elderly, you know, just me kind of paraphrasing, putting in my own language, in my own words. You know, he wanted to know what was going on in there. Come on, help me right here for just a little bit. And then the servant let him to know, you know, your brother has come back home. And the father has killed a fatted calf. You know what hinders a lot of people from coming in and getting in on the inside? It is nothing but one dead calf. Come on, can you say amen? That hinders a lot of people from receiving the blessings of God and they're getting the help that they really need from God. And if the Lord would help me right here tonight and would stand by me and if you would pray for me right here tonight, I want to preach on that one day. That was the very thing that kept the eldest son on the outside. Come on, can you say amen? I know you're saying right here tonight, all oh, brother Lynn, you're going all together different than you did Tuesday night. All together different than it was last night. Come on, help me. Don't blame it on me. Put it on God. Because I want to tell you something. I haven't laid down today. I didn't yesterday and take a nap. But I want to tell you what, this thing has been on my heart. And my heart has been a pound. And, and I want to deliver to you my soul right here tonight. Help me right here for just a little while. And we can see, we can look in verse 25 there are that story there and it says, now his eldest son was in the field and he came and he drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked, he said what these things meant and he said unto him, thy brother is come and thy father have killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. But then I want you to notice right there in verse 28, and it says, and he was angry. Come on, help me right here for just a little while. And we see the anger that was a grip in his heart. Come on, can you say amen? Come on, I want to tell you something. I believe in wholeness from the crown of my 
my head to the end of my fingers to the sole of my shoes. I believe in that. Come on, can you say amen? But I also believe it's going to take more than long sleeves to make it to heaven. I also believe it's going to take more than the long hair on the women to make it to God's heaven. I also believe it's going to be abstaining from the appearance of evil and, and fleeing fornication. Come on, help me right here. I believe in all of that. I really do. But I want to tell you something, my friend. I believe that anger, I believe that jealousy and pride and bitterness and malice is just as dangerous as some of these things. Come on. I believe in having a hole in this standard. I really do. But I want to tell you something. There is some things that is a creeping in among us that is a destroyed and hindering a move of God, my friend. Help me right here. And I want to tell you right here tonight. I feel that the Lord has placed this on my heart to preach right here tonight at this meeting, my friend. And it could be as simple as one dead cat that is keeping somebody from really entering in and receiving the blessing and the help that they really need from God. I remember as a younger preacher, you know how I love to hear people preach and come down and close lines message didn't bother me. But I love to hear it. And I think it's needful. I really do. But I'll never forget one time I was sitting by an elderly preacher. There was a young man up preaching. I want to tell you he was, he was preaching. He was putting it out there. And that elderly man sitting by me that was a preacher and been in it for years, he said, I could cover it with a quarter. I said to myself, I said, my Lord, I didn't question him anything. I said, what is he talking about? But as years went by, I realized what that preacher is talking about. Man, if y'all get any quieter here tonight, the devil's going to get scared Come on, I realized what he was talking about. Come on, help me right here for a little bit. Help me. You know, when the elderly brother was returning from the field and near the house, the sound of music, it filled the air. He notices that there is a celebration that's going on. People are rejoicing. They're just having a great time. Come on. And then in verse 26 and 27, he inquires of the servant. He said, what these things meant. He's interested in knowing, come on, what the celebration is all about. Come on, isn't it something when people are rejoicing, having a good time in the house of God, sometimes we have to be without Come on, and we want to know what these things mean. What is it going on? Come on, help me right here tonight. Come on, I feel like that I'm way out in left field here tonight. I feel like I'm all alone in this service for some reason. But then again, for some reason, I feel like I got y'all's attention right here. Come on, what is it going on? What does these things mean? Come on, but I want to tell you what. And then the servant let him know that his father had killed a fatted calf. And he had welcomed his brother back home. But then again, we see the indignation of the son. Come on. In the indignation, it was shown. The anger, it was shown. And then the next thing we know that it was spoken, my friend. I want you to notice what did he said, my friend. First of all, when it was shown, it probably he was outside the door and there was rejoicing going on. And then the father went outside to invite him to come in. Come on in the house. Come on in where there's rejoicing. Come Come on in where there's peace and there's happiness. Come on in and get in and rejoice with us. But I want to tell you what the elderly son stayed outside the door because he was anger. Come on. No doubt he was probably the one that stayed there and fed that fatted calf. And he remembered that fatted calf. Come on. He remembered and was looking forward to the day when they was going to kill it. Come on. And they was going to slaughter it. And they were going to get the beef steaks off of it. But then again, they was an anger that 
rose up inside of him. He did not want the younger son to have any part of it. Come on, help me right here for a little while. Isn't there something right here tonight? Come on, help me. We can be saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. But then again, we can let a little anger, come on, and we can let a little hatred. And come on, and anger will begin to build. Oh, Lamb of God, pray why I pray. Because I'm a feeling the sweet Holy Ghost right here tonight. Come on, help me right here. It used to be among us. It didn't bother us. Come on, if they would say we had all against a brother, we was going to fix it before we went to bed. We was going to take care of it before the sun went down. But it bothers me in this day and time and hour that you and I are living in, my friend, that we can just override it and keep on going on day after day and month after month. Come on, help me right here. Till we soon get to the place. We feel like we don't have to do nothing. Come on, help me right here. You say, oh, brother Lee, you had a convention. You are preaching a convention. We're not having a confession. Sir. It might be good if we did have a confession. If you've got all against your brother, my friend, we need to fix it and get on about God's business. See, we see, see, first of all, his anger was shown. I've been around some of this. I've dealt with some of this. There was a time I was a novice at this. But I don't feel like I am no more. I've been down, had a few bumps and knocks. But I was like Brother Savage. I'm not about to get in. Give in. Come on, help me right here for a little while. I've received some calls. I've received some letters. Come on. Woo, maybe we might ought to pray over the food. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, help me right here. But then, I want to tell you something. He let his anger to be showed, and then he let it to be known by what he said. Come on, help me right here. I want you to notice what he said in verse 29. And he answering said to his father, he said, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. Notice that he said, and yet never, never. Father, I was the one that stayed, and he was the one that strayed. I was the one that served, and he was the one that sinned. I was the one that waited upon things, and he was the one that wasted. Come on. But then his anger was shown. You ever been around anybody like that? Their anger was shown. How do you handle it? How do you deal with it? I tell you how I dealt with it one time. I had a man come to me. I knew. I knew. I knew. I, I, I've got I, I've got a little bit of brain. I don't know how much. I got a little bit. I had a fellow come to me one time. Said, Brother Lynn. Said, I, I'd love to take you out to dinner. I knew that fellow. My Lord, he wasn't going to spend no money on me for dinner. I said, listen, you got something on your chest. Come on in here and let's get it over with. There ain't no need of selling it over no dinner. Just going to keep your money. Y'all with me out there? Come on, help me raise. Some of you probably had the same thing that's happened to you. Come on, well, he come in there, and I mean, but he poured his heart out. Come on, help me. And you know, it made me, I, I don't guess I felt like I ever done anything right. Come on. But I want to tell you something. I, I did not let my anger rise up within me. I really didn't. I really didn't. Help me right here. 
I'll never forget it. And I don't know why in the world it's just Brother Lee and Head's tactics, I guess. You know what? He was uh, telling me all about it. He was a uh, bitten and telling me all about it. I just rubbed him. He, he had a bald head. I just rubbed him on his bald head. I said, you know what you need to do? You just need to go home and pray the role of a grandfather. I want to tell you what he didn't like that one bit. Come on, help me right here. But I want to tell you what, I wasn't about to vent back with him. Come on, come on, help me right here. I had that much. They wasn't going to be no fight. They wasn't no fight there with us. Come on. They was no intentions about that. But there is people that will rise up like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And a lot of time it is over nothing but just one dead cave. Come on, can you say amen? Hey, we talk about revival. We want to see a move of God. And we've got to have a move of God. Come on. But there comes a time we'd better search our heart and we'd better search our lives to make sure that there is no evil way within us. Make sure we don't have anything against our brothers and our sisters. I thought about as these young people got up here and are preaching in a youth service. That brother got up here last night and mounted his pulpit and he preached over there from Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 and he talked about the enemies against revival and he began to go down the list, my friend, about the enemies against revival. That is a hindering revival. You know, I feel like one thing that could be hindering a move of God. Come on. We talk about the boys on the hill that's a playing with the drugs and a shooting it up and a playing with the alcohol and a living it up. Did you know they know what's going on in the church more so than sometimes we do? Come on. I oh, ain't help me right here. And then sometimes it is nothing but one dead cave. Woo, sweet lamb of God. The pastor gets up here and he says they passed by this church hundreds of times. And he says sometimes even the Spirit of the Lord moves on them, stops them, brings them back. Come on, help me right here. But he hasn't brought them in. But we are looking for that day, he says, when they will be brought in. Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here for a little while. Could it be something they know about me? Could it be something they know about you? Come on, help me right Oh, y'all going to help me preach right here tonight? Are oh, y'all praying right here tonight? I want to tell you something. It's already been said here tonight. The thief coming, but to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Bible said Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Come on, help me preach a while. Oh, I feel the Lord in this house. I really do. I really don't know what to do with all this. I really don't. I really don't even have to end this service right here tonight. But I know one thing. The Holy Ghost knows just exactly what to do. Come on, help me preach a while. Come on, it could be just one dead cat that is kind of really keeping us from a move of God. I don't know why that it is. But back home, I get involved in a lot of funerals. A lot of them. I know, I know one thing, me just me being born and raised around there. People know me. And I guess another thing, being a community pastor, visiting them and dealing with them. Come on. But I can remember one service particular. I preached several funerals in that family. Preached, preached the mother's and dad's funeral. Preached most of the children's funeral. Come on. I can remember that last sister of that family dying. We had the service at the funeral home. We drove a little ways to the graveside. I knew the funeral director real good, and he knew me. As we gathered under that tent, family was staying and way off. Come on. As we got up under there to do the committal service, the funeral director said, hey, he said, y'all, come on. 
Let's gather closer. Get closer. So we can hear what the preacher's got to say. I knew that there was divisions and differences in that family. I knew that. I knew that when I was doing the funeral. But as they got closer to that tent, and I began to talk from the Word of God, and when we prayed, come on, I watch you. Why does he always have to use Eric? Why does he always have to use Eric? I tell you why, because he's a pastor. Woo, sweet lamb of God. <laughs> I don't believe I'm going to the fellowship hall tonight. I believe I'm going to the room. <laughs> Come on, help me right here. Help me right here for a little bit. Come on, come on, help me right here. I, I, I'm looking into the eyes of some right here tonight. I feel like that God are wanting to do something far. Come on, help me right here. And it bothers me even among our young people. Sometimes we don't really understand young people. We don't understand what they're going through. But really in truth, things to them is a reality. Come on, help me right here. Come on, when the boyfriend, when he leaves and goes with another little Susie, come on, they get all upset and they get all tore up about it. And they get all bothered about it. And to me and you just done been married and been married for years, I want to tell you it don't mean one thing to us. We'll say, well, just get over it. It wasn't nothing but puppy love. But to them, it is something of the else. Come on. And it really means something. It really bothers them. And it creates feelings. Come on, can you say amen? And it hinders him from getting into the move of God. It hinders him from getting into the spirit of God to get to the place where God really wants him to be. Come on, help me right here for a little while. I want to tell you something as a brother back home used to say. Come on, help me. I'm not going to let a Sally Susie keep me from a worshiping God and come on and a praising God. i tell you what I'd love to do right here tonight. I'd love to enter in where there's rejoicing. I'd love to enter in where there's singing. I'd love to enter in where there's come on worship. I'd love to enter in where there's dancing, my oh sweet lamb of God, I'm a feeling the glory of the Lord right here tonight in this house, my friend. And you know what I'm a feeling here tonight? I'm a feeling that there are some of you right here tonight that is under the sound of my voice. You would really and truly love to enter in, my friend. But the thing you've got to do, you've got to bury that dead cat and get over it and get beyond it. I know what y'all are afraid of tonight. I can feel the thumping of your heart. You're afraid I'm going to give an altar call. And you're, going to, you're afraid I'm going to say, all of you that's guilty, stand up and come on to the front. And I want to tell you something. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm really not. I'm really not. Because I feel the seriousness of God right here tonight in this house. I really do. I really do. But the question is, do we really feel the seriousness of God? The Father told the Son, Everything that I have is thine. And you're going to stay outside just on kind of one dead calf. Oh, I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. I'll never forget, I'll never forget a time, it's been a few years ago now, church in another state had asked me about coming, preaching a service, just one service. I never had been there, didn't know, didn't know hardly anybody. But I remember, I was busting wood 
I'd sawed up some wood, and I was busting wood with an axe and a maul. I didn't have no wood splitter and still don't. And uh, I was just busting up wood. Had my mind on the Lord and about that service. I was going to go preach. And I felt like the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, dealt with me and spoke to me and says, when you go, you're going to preach danger in the judgment. I said, my Lord, that sounds mighty stiff and mighty strong for the first time. I want to tell you, it's time draw near. And that day approached. The Lord still had that burning on my heart. And I went to that service. And I obeyed God. And I preached on danger in the judgment. I remember some of my people, they went with me. Some of them has even asked me, said, won't you preach that message again? But the Lord had never dealt with me about it. But I'll never forget that service. My wife was with me. She was there. Before I even got through preaching, there were people coming out of them pews, going across them aisles, And they were making apologies. And I said to myself, I said, my Lord, what in the world is going on here? I was totally in the dark. Just the way I feel right here tonight. Some of them even come to the pastor. Then there was another preacher brother there that come to me. I knew him. He said, Brother Lynn, you didn't know one thing. And I didn't. But he said, God knew. Well, maybe I've killed it. Maybe I have destroyed it. Oh, I feel the Lord. One dead cave. You're going to let one dead cave keep you away from the blessings of God? One dead cave. Do we need a song? Do we need a song here tonight? If I don't want to have been bitter, I could be bitter. If I wanted hatred in my heart, I could have it. If I wanted anger in my heart, I could have it. But I chose not to. I'd rather have the anointing and feel the Spirit of God than to let anger control me. Come on right here tonight. I feel the Lord. I don't feel like I'm the only one right here tonight that feels the sweet Holy Ghost that's a dealing and a moving among some right here tonight. How about it? I'm not putting you on the spot. God in heaven forbid. I'm not singling you out. God forbid. I'll be the first to admit. I'm ashamed to admit it. But then again, I'm not afraid to admit it. There's times I've made apologies to my wife.
Come on. I'm going to tell you something. We ain't never had no knockdown drag outs. Our daddy has always told us, taught us, you're not much of a man if you hit a woman. I never have even thought about it. I don't want you to, I don't want you to even think that. But there have been some times we've had silent moments. And there are no fun. It is something to come to the house of God washed in the same blood, going to the same heaven. But yet we we'll walk all the way around the building to ignore somebody. This ain't camp meeting preaching, I know. But this is what's on my heart. And we say we want to move a God. We say we want to see the backsliders come in. We say we want to see the sinners saved. I'm going to tell you something. You don't fool a backslider. You don't fool the sinners. They know what's going on at the church. Why is this one doing that? Why is this one going there now? Why? Why? Oh, my Lord, have mercy. How about it tonight? Could we have a memorial service? I feel like some of you, you're wanting to have a memorial service, and you're wanting to bury it. You want to put the past in the past and get beyond it and let the past be in the past. I said by staying right here tonight. I got some other things I could say, some other things. But for some reason I don't feel like I don't went long enough. Maybe too long. But brother Lee, you don't know how it hurts. Brother Lee, you don't really know how I feel. Brother Lee, you don't really know how I was done. You think about all that Christ went through, the suffering, how he was treated. Come on. All that he went through. I'll tell you what, he knows how you feel. And by his help and by his grace, you can make it. You can make it. But Bobby, I really, I feel like I've obeyed the Lord. I've tried my very best. Oh, God of heaven, God of heaven. We got things that come in among the holiness people that disturbs me and it bothers me. And we got people like this sister right over here that needs a miracle. And I tell you, if I know my heart, I've even poured my heart out to God several times. I said, God, I don't want to stand in the way of being the way of nobody receiving I don't want to be an obstacle. I don't want to be a hindrance. My Lord, my Lord, I feel the Lord. And what this preacher has preached to us tonight. But I feel like there's somebody here tonight. That you're going to let this thing destroy you. As he said, it's going to, it's going to be uh, noticed or known. But then it's going to be so powerfully exhibited that everybody's going to know that you're just grieving over that one dead calf. Thank God. Praise God. I wonder how many of us could come. Step out. Let's come gather around.
these altars. Come and gather in and say, Lord, help us to stay close. Help us not to let anything, praise God, I know we don't have all the room, but come, stand, whatever. Praise the Lord, but you would pray. And you would say, Lord, the dead calf is going to be buried tonight. I'm going to bury the calf tonight. I'm not going to just stand around and moan and groan over one dead calf. Come on. Praise God. He has preached to us. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Come on, saints of God. I'm telling you, it will happen. It is happening. Praise God. When we should be praying and asking God. Asking God. Hallelujah. To help us. To be more like Him. Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in to where. Hey man, the rejoicings, the singing's going on. Come on in, praise God. To where the blessings of the Lord is flowing. Hallelujah. Let's bury, let's bury that dead calf. Let's not go to hell over one dead calf. Let's not lose out the blessings of the Lord over one dead calf. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Hallelujah. Would you pray? Would you pray? Young people. Young people, would you pray? Come on, young people. You say, I I, I can't get in like I used to. Amen. Oh, come on here. Bury the calf. Bury the calf. Hallelujah. Don't let those little trivial things, those little trivial differences stand between you and your blessing. Would you pray? He has preached to us. He has preached to us. Oh, help us, Lord. Oh, help us, Lord. Would you pray tonight? Come on, girls. Come on, young ladies. Pray, pray, pray. Come on, young men. Come on, boys. Would you pray? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Help us. Help us to see. Help us to see. Lord, help us to bury. Help us to bury it. Help us to bury it. Help us to get rid of it. Oh, glory to God. Let us rejoice with those that are rejoicing. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice with those that are rejoicing. Let us sing with those that are singing. Let us dance among those that are dancing under the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Hallelujah. Would you pray tonight? Would you pray tonight? Would you ask the Lord? Would you just ask the Lord tonight? Help me. Help me. Don't let this thing, don't let this thing grow any farther. Don't let this thing get any more harder. No, don't let this thing become any more. Oh, come on. But let me bury it tonight. 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 Let me bury it tonight in this service. Would you pray? Because come on, folks. Come on, folks. Come on, come on, come on. I'll take sunshine, sunshine for rain. rain. Lord, I'll trade comfort.